Hey everybody, my name is Cool Blood. I'm bringing you all this video of me talking about some technology stuff. Uh, and for those who are normally here for my board game stuff, no worries, uh, I'm continuing doing that. For those who are here for the tech things, I will dive into the podcasting box that I have here before us. Um, but before we get down into that, I do want to kind of give an overview of what this video is going to be. Uh, essentially, I'm going to talk, uh, give a brief overview of what's inside this box, and then I'll talk about the history of my podcast, portable podcasting boxes. And then from there, I'll talk about some features with the Rode Go 2. Um, sorry, the Rodecaster Pro 2, sorry, the Rodecaster Pro 2, um, plus the Rode Go 2 wirelesses and the connectivity with those, because I feel like there's other videos for that. And then we'll, we'll kind of finish things up talking about the rest of the cast of equipment that goes into making this functional. Uh, and what I mean by that is like uh, my mic stands, my microphones that I use, some comparisons and stuff like that. Uh, we're not going to do a sound quality comparison, but we're going to talk about some other stuff. So cool. Now we got that out of the way, let me go and start our music in the background um, and let's get moving. So. The overview of the box. So this box here has the Rodecaster Pro 2 along with a power bank uh, to power it along with my mics that I use, uh, or at least the, the transmitters and the receivers that I use for my microphones along with some headphones and, you know, the other supporting equipment. Um, I will be disassembling this box a little bit later, but for right now, I'm just going to talk about what's here and tell you what's here, and then I'll show you later. So we have the Rode uh, the Rode Procaster 2 here. We have the Rode, or two sets of Rode, Go, Rode Wireless Go 2s. Uh, so there's four mics inside of here. There's some JLab headphones here that kind of fit in the little box, or fit in this little, little corner that I've etched out for them. And then some miscellaneous cables. Under the Rodecaster Pro 2, we have a power bank that's under there. You can see the little window there. So the power bank is in here. And then we also have my older mics that I used to use. I don't use those anymore. They just kind of live in the box because I don't, I haven't really figured out another place to put them. But um, we also have those mics inside of there. I guess I can use this backup if I really needed to. So yeah, so that's kind of the box itself. That's an overview of the box. Uh, this box in total with the box itself, assuming that you don't need any, any of the other equipment, uh, will, will run you somewhere around $1,700, $1,800. So that's about um, $700 for the Rodecaster Pro 2. That's about uh, $600 for both of these. And then the box itself is $200. And then the other stuff is, you know, adds up. It adds up pretty fast. So just in case you want to know what the price tag on all this looks like that's what it kind of looks like uh moving on to the rest of the rest of the uh things to talk about uh let's go and talk about the history of my podcasting box boxes so i used to use a zoom live track l8 inside of a different box which is completely disassembled it has been reclaimed for parts for most part but here's the older box as you can see it is smaller and I do have my Zoom Live Track L8 inside of here just to kind of demonstrate what it would look like with it all uh, inside the box. Uh, it's the, the main thing I liked about this one is that all the connections were here on the top. It was pretty nice. It, it was easy to get the cables connected. Ah, it was great. Uh, but since I've moved on to the Rodecaster Pro 2 because the features that, that's available inside the Zoom Live Track L8 um, weren't as neat and as cool as what I wanted. So I moved on to the, the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2, built another box around it, so on and so forth. Uh, these two, these three areas here, this is where the headphones used to sit. This is where one of the, this is where this would sit, like so. It kind of fit in there like a little glove. Um, and then my headphones would fit right there. And then, oh, I think that would sit sideways. Yeah, there you go. And then uh, I'll be able to, um, you know, kind of close the box and go. Uh, there's also a power bank at the bottom of this too, so I can power everything. Uh, which I really only need to power this. So there's a power bank down there. There's spaces for the uh, condenser mics. There's also other stuff. Uh, there's a whole video on this entire build. I'm not going to go into too much more detail than what I just did uh, because there's a whole video talking about like, you know, pros and cons and all this other fun stuff. Uh, it worked. It was serviceable. I used it for about a year and a half uh, before I finally moved on to this other box here. So that is the history of the podcasting boxes. Go check out the video if you want to see more details about that one. Um, I don't have the total value, the total cost, I should say, of that one, but I will say it was cheaper. <laughs> it was definitely cheaper. And also it was nice because I can keep every, nearly everything inside of that one box. So going back over here um, to talk about some more stuff. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just do a quick disassemble of the box, and then we'll move on to talking about some of the other uh the go-to wireless connectivity situation and then we'll talk about the rest of the supporting equipment so inside of this box we've already kind of did a tour but let's go ahead and tear it down so here we have uh, this is the go-to wireless oh sorry this is the rodecaster pro 2 
Uh, we have the four inputs here that we can use. Uh, in order to connect into those, because I use the go to wirelesses with them, um, I use angle cables. So use angle quarter inch cables to connect into it. Here we go, like so. And that's beneficial because it gives me enough clearance to actually have them plugged in while the Rodecaster Pro 2 is sitting there. And then this plugs into the receiver, uh, so that way the transmitters can talk to it. And then I have them in left and right channels so they can actually send their signals into the individual channels, which we'll demonstrate sometime later. Uh, but that's just me kind of giving you a full detail, kind of showing you what I'm talking about here. And uh, these here are just to get headphones out to everybody. Uh, I have a few cables, which we'll talk about in the support bag later on, that can that are used to bring the audio to people who are sitting further away. And of course, S micro SD card, and this is a magnetic USB Type-C thing that I'm using here. And that would connect into the power supply down here. The reason why I have it magnetic is because one, it's at an angle. And then two, there's a gap around here, so it can kind of bounce around a little bit. So I was a little bit concerned that if I had a USB Type-C cable just plugged into it, that it might cause some problems or it might break off inside of it. So in order to kind of get around that or circumvent or kite that particular thing, what I decided to do was to make a, uh, use a USB Type-C that was magnetic that could carry the power necessary to power it. And uh, that ultimately worked out for me. So that in itself was pretty cool. Uh, I also have a cable here, the same cable here, just uh, separate, longer. So if I have a power supply that can provide the appropriate power, which is 15 volts, two amps, which is actually not as common yet, but it's getting more common, uh, then I can just plug this directly into the wall to power the Rodecaster Pro 2. And then I have this, oops. Sorry, and then I have this cable here, which goes to the power bank. And this cable is what I use to charge the power bank, so I don't have to dig it up every single time I want to charge it. I can just plug a USB Type-C in there, and then it'll just charge the power bank under it. So that was, that was like a little minor thing that worked out. This is a um, like a, a one foot one foot cable for a USB Type C female end to a USB Type C male end extension cable, if you want to call it that instead. And I think that's it for that. These are the Rodecaster. Let's use the Rode Go to wirelesses. As you can see, they're in there. Oh, and this is the side of a Zgenic case. There's two more there. And then these are the JLab headphones we saw we saw earlier. Let's get this out of the way. And then down here we have a cavity that I can use to store some stuff if I really wanted to. Um, but right here we have uh, my previous solution, which is I, I used to use condenser mics. So this is the um, these are the Rode uh, Rode Video Micro ones. These are Rode Video Micro ones, and they would they they, they service me pretty well. Uh, they're condenser mics, which means that they pick up a lot of sound. They're pretty sensitive, but they're condenser shotgun mics, so they are directional. So, um, and you know, within the first few seasons of my podcast that I, that I work on, which to clarify, I'm not going to tell you what the podcast is, so you can listen to it. Uh, unfortunately, because it's not one that I'm at liberty to give out, so I'll just keep referring to it as my podcast and being vague about it. So, my apologies for those who want to hear it and see what it sounds like. Uh, but essentially, these worked out pretty well uh, once you use them correctly. Which, to clarify, correctly is when you plug them in. Make sure that you attach this after you tighten it down. Make sure you, that you clip that in, because then it reduces the amount of wobble that it has. If you don't do that, then the microphone will wobble helplessly every single time, and the shock mount is still effective, but it's less effective. Anyway, little little tip for everybody who didn't know that, because I learned that from a YouTube video. But yeah, but those those live in here because I don't have anywhere else to put them, so they are no longer used because uh, I use dynamic mics instead, but they are here. And then, let's see. And then if I remove this layer here and remove that, oh, we have my cell phone here. So this cell phone is actually used for the podcast group. It's dead right now, but essentially what this is, we use this for like music in the background. If you gotta make a web phone call, we'll do that, like a Zoom call uh, when it's charged, of course. And then finally, to remove that foam we can see the bottom area so this bottom area is essentially the power bank and then the other two mics because we have a three-person podcast with interviews every once in a while with the fourth person so we have four mics which is why once again it was nice to have those because they all fit in the box but i moved on like i said for the 17th time <laughs> um, but for this one we have the power bank in here this is a anchor uh, anchor power core elite three uh, this, I think at the time that I bought it, I got it for half off, so I paid $75 for it, but if you want to buy one right now, I think it's about $140, so 
not cheap, not a cheap power bank, but it is able to put out the 15 volts. I think it puts out, puts out 15 volts, three amps, which the Rodecaster Pro 2 needs 15 volts, two amps. So this puts out enough power to power the, the Rodecaster Pro 2 without the Rodecaster Pro 2 complaining. Uh, that's pretty nice. This is the cable that I use to charge it, which goes into one of the USB-Cs. And this is the cable that I use to power the Rodecaster Pro 2, which connects in right there. And that just kind of snakes at the bottom up through here. And so does that one snake through here. Okay, cool. All right. So that's, that's the disassembled box. Um, it's self-contained, which is pretty nice. And it also means that I have nearly everything that I need to do a podcast if I just have the box itself all packed away, packaged away. And the footprint is the footprint that we see here, which is also kind of cool. It also kind of forms its own table, which means that if you're doing this like at a park or something with a podcast or recording audio for some reason out, out in the field, this could be useful. I don't know how useful, but it could be. Depends on your use case, really. So some things to talk about while I'm taking or putting this back together. Uh, one of the, one of the main caveats with this is that you know the price tag is a thing to consider. Uh, if you want to have a portable podcast recording solution and you don't need all the bells and whistles that a Rodecaster Pro 2 gives you, I would honestly say just get a Zoom Live Track. I'm oh, sorry, not a Zoom Live Track. Uh, get a Zoom. Um, Oh man, I forgot the name of them. The the recorders, the handy recorders. Get one of those. Uh, the the eight or the the six, the Zoom H N six or is it eight? I don't remember the name of it. Um, man, I'm I'm like super not prepared to talk about that one. But those ones are pretty nice because they allow you to get all the input you need, and you can do your podcast recording. It's pretty pretty much more mobile than this is. This one's mobile but with all with a lot of bells and whistles that are probably excessive relative to the uh, quality of podcast that we end up recording anyway. Or the quality that we need, I should say. But I like it. You know, I've already invested in it. I've, I've, I spent my uh, hard-earned money and my hard-earned time building it. So why not? So why not? Okay. So we got all this back in the box here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and power up the Rodecaster Pro 2. And then we'll talk about some of the connectivity things specifically we'll talk about the ability for the Rode go to wireless to connect to the Rodecaster Pro 2 um, because there are some caveats that I think are important I don't know if they're being high or as ex as uh, expanded upon by many others or maybe people don't really care too much about it but for me it was a feature that I was like I was really excited when Rode announced that ability they're unlocking that ability but then I was a little bit sad when I actually got to see it in practice because it was not exactly the way I wanted it to be. And we'll talk we'll talk about what that is here in a second. I'm talking about why that is, I should say it here in a second. So to set this up and to prepare us for the conversation, what we have um, for our demonstration is we have two sets of Rode GoTo wirelesses. I happen to have three total for reasons that I won't really get into the details of, um, but I happen to have three total. So that means that I have six wireless mics. And for the podcast, I talked about four that we would connect in, or I would connect in these into the back using these angle cables to allow me to get the clearance that I need to plug in. And that means I have four mics already. And then because I happen to have two more, I was excited when the road announced the ability to connect your, uh, to connect your transmitters directly into the Rodecaster Pro 2, because that means that I could also do these two as well. Correct? No, incorrect. Actually completely incorrect. So the way this actually works, and I have them all set up here, is that if you want to connect in your transmitters, if you want to connect in your transmitters, you must use up one of the channels. So if I go over here into, uh, let's see. Let me do, yeah. So, so if I go into our uh, setup here, so uh, just to clarify, um, I have one, two, three, four, and these are corresponding currently to one, two, three, four, the uh, connects on the back. And then these two over here are the extra ones. Uh, if I go into here and try to change my settings and I want to use just the wireless transmitter, the wireless transmitter is included in one of those top four. So it's a little bit hard to see the screen there, um, but what this is showing is it's showing um, input one, input two, input three, input four. I can do stereo for them uh, to combine them if I need to for whatever reason, or, sorry, for, for whatever purpose might serve me. But what we see here is we see that this can connect in a mic, it can connect in a instrument, it can connect in uh, whatever that symbol means, or the wireless. And that's a problem. <laughs> that's a problem because what I can't do is I can't use a fourth, or so I can't use a fifth or sixth channel 
to connect in the wireless transmitter. The wireless transmitter must take up one of the incoming channels. So it must take up one of these four channels, which is really frustrating because that means that if I want to use the transmitter, it has to take up an entire connection. So if I want to plug in, let's say I want to plug in these. Oh, sorry. And we'll give it a practical demonstration here. So this is a number one and two. If I can find the connection, there we go. So this is in number one and two, which we can tell if we, let's see, if I unmute those. Yeah, so if I touch on this, uh, which is probably not the best way to mess with your equipment. So for all the, okay, let, 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 me, let me do a proper demonstration here so I don't freak out too many people because there's probably a lot of uh, audio engineers out there and audio files cringing at me doing that. Uh, if, if, I, if I turn on these, uh, turn on this receiver and then turn on a transmitter, I have my Rode GoTo Wireless can, uh, set up in the uh, the mode where they're doing sp uh, split channel, so left and right. So this one, this number number two, <laughs> transmitter number two, or yeah, transmitter number two is going into the receiver. And the receiver, if I talk, if I bring it closer to my mouth, you can see it's going up pretty high. Once again, I'm not sure how clear that is to y'all, but you can see the number, you can see the line moving. Yep, there we go. Okay, cool. And if I tap on it because he's doing that, just trying to prove that it's working. And that's going through there. And let's turn on this one as well. So that's gonna be this one here. And if I tap on that one, see, there we go, I'm tapping on it. Okay, cool, that's all good. And let's put those there. So if I wanted to connect in a wireless transmitter, which is this one here, and let's say I wanna connect it over to this channel, I have to change the entire instrument. Um, right now I have it set to instrument for reasons that I don't really want to get into, but uh, it, it just worked that way better for me instead of doing line in for some reason. Uh, well, I, okay, I guess I will talk about it. <laughs> but if I want to do a transmitter, uh, one of the wireless transmitters, then I have to click on that and it takes up the whole entire channel. So let me unpair all devices, there we go. So I'm going to try to pair this, actually let me pair, I'm trying to pair this to this. So I'm going to turn this one, well first let me pair a new device. And then it says uh, power on the transmitter and then press the power button once more. So I'm powering on this transmitter. There we go, it's now turned on. And then I'm gonna press the button once more. Oh, I missed my time window. There we go. And it is, oh sorry, it's connected. Okay, cool. So this is the one that's connected. So you can see if I mute it, if I click the button to mute, it's gonna mute. If I click the button to unmute, it's gonna unmute. Turns out to plus 12. Um, the problem with that is that if I mute this one, okay? So I've muted it. This is the one that's connected to it. Uh, I think number two was number one. So this one was connected to that channel. So if I tap on this, we're getting nothing. And then if I go to this one, the other one, and this is number one, and I tap on this, which was number two, confusingly, and I tap on this, it'll be... So, so the problem that you have is that you're not able to use... Let me un... So this is the um, one that's wirelessly connected to the... Uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 directly. If I tap on that, see there we go. We got lines moving and stuff. So so what that means is that I don't have the ability to connect in six of these. Also, you can only connect a max of two transmitters anyway. So they're basically encouraging you to buy a Rodecast, uh, a Rode Go 2 Wireless plus a Rodecaster Pro 2 together, so that we can have two wireless mics and do some cool stuff. I mean that's nice and all, um, and I'm glad they unlocked it. But the implication is that the transmitter has been there the whole time, or the, the receiver has been inside of the Rodecaster Pro 2 the whole time because Rodecaster Pro 2 came out a while ago, and they just recently unlocked the ability, which means that I paid for that, but I don't really get to use it, which it'll be nice if they expand it to let me assign the transmitters, sorry, yeah, assign the receiver, no, the transmitter, yeah. <laughs> if they let me use the transmitters on the virtual channels, that'd be perfect. I would love that so much, because I can have six mic sets here, and I can do some cool stuff, but as it currently stands, I do not have that ability. Um, you do have the ability though, which I was a fan of, you do have the ability to use the wireless wireless um, connections here with this, actually. So you can set this up. You can set this up, and you can also use Bluetooth still. Um, I was originally fearful that if you connected this, you would not be able to use Bluetooth, but you can use Bluetooth and this, which that's nice. I do like that, so kudos to Rode for making that available. Um, but that's just kind of get into some details regarding that. Um, also, just to preference everything, uh, now I'm done, I'm kind of towards the end of talking about this. Um, I am nowhere near an audio engineer. I am nowhere near an audio professional. I am purely somebody who's a prosumer, prosumer at best, 
meaning that if you ask some very technical questions, I won't be able to kind of help that much. Uh, we can go ahead and talk about some latency things, though. So should I get these to somewhat of an even level? Uh, oh. Wrong mic. Where are we? Okay, there we go. So I'm going to put both of these mics here at the same level and try to get them to the same levels. So this one... Uh, let me get myself oriented properly here. Okay. All right. So this is this is the wirelessly connected one. This is the other one. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is I'm trying to get into the same audio level. So if I'm talking with a distance of here and I'm talking to the mics, uh, we see that this one's kind of getting towards there. If I go over here and try to do the same thing, we need to add more. We're just going to add more noise, but these are relatively even. So these are relatively even. It's a little bit more sensitive. There we go. Okay, cool. Good enough. And the point of me doing this is to kind of show you that there's a latency. So there is some additional latency with using the transmitter, or so using the receiver that's built into the Rodecaster Pro 2. So um, you can see that this one over here is much more responsive, very slightly. So this one, which is connected directly here, is slightly faster at responding than the Rodecaster Pro 2. So that's, that's something that if you're using a mixed environment to where you have these kind of mixed like this, you will hear a little bit of echo. It won't be nearly as bad as using a uh, Rode GoTo Wireless plus a Saramonic mics. I think the Rode GoTo Wirelesses have a um, have a two millisecond latency, and the Saramonic mics have like a point uh, have a six millisecond latency or something like that. And I think the DJI the DJI mics, if you get those, I think they have the same point six or something like that, or six milliseconds latency. Um, but what I'm trying to point out is that the latency from the Rode go to wireless to its own transmitter. So from the from the transmitter to the receiver, uh, it's pretty small and it's like very fast. It's very like snappy to the point where it nearly sounds like you're speaking at the same time. Um, but if you go over to the other side and you look on the ability for the transmitter to connect to the Rodecaster Pro 2, there's some latency and that can be a problem. That can be a problem if you're using a mixed medium situation. Like like as I'm like, it's, it's very slight. I don't know how well it's going to show up in the video. But as I'm looking at it, like if I just do a snap, let me just do a quick snap. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it go quiet and then I'm going to snap and we're going to look at the visual here. So we can see the reaction from, we can see the reaction from the Rode GoTo Wireless connected directly to the um, audio is faster. So that's the thing that instead of using mixed medium, um, it's, I guess it won't be that big of a deal in hindsight because they are still pretty fast and they are still pretty responsive. But I do want to highlight that because I don't know if anybody's talking about that yet. Because uh, that 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 means that I I would either use it'll be an all or nothing situation. Having the ability to connect a GoTo wireless directly to the Rodecaster Pro 2 is only useful for me as a backup, just in case one of the transmitters or sorry one of the receivers has problems or something. I don't know. But yeah. Cool. All right. So I think I've exhausted all that I want to talk about on that one. So let's go ahead and move on to the final part of this entire video, which is going to be me talking about the supporting cast for this box. So let's get this less confusing. Uh, let me turn off this one, which I think is here. Actually, let me keep this one on. So I'm going to keep what? Eh, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to like, I'm waffling between how I want to do my next demonstration here. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna keep these plugged in. And then we're gonna turn off this one. No, you know, no, no, okay, fine. All right, I've changed my mind. I changed my mind about changing my mind. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off the physically connected ones. So these are all turned off. And we'll unplug that. Give us a little bit of flexibility here. Okay, <clears throat> put these away. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and get the mics out so we can go ahead and talk about some of the microphone situations. Uh, for the microphones that I use, I use uh, mic stands. We use four mic stands because we can have up to four people on our podcast here uh, that, once again, I'll just kind of vaguely refer to. And of, because I have four mics, the, nece the necessity for four mics specifically, I need to buy everything four times. So I originally went with the Pile, um, pile Pod Mic or P PID Mic, whatever they call it, Pile PID Mic. Um, 50, uh, sorry, 87s, I think that's what they're called. I'll bring them up here in a second. And uh, that that ultimately was an okay solution. They cost $14 a piece. 
and I had to buy it by four times. So I saved a lot of money, but unfortunately they were not quality enough for me to utilize. They ultimately ended up not being quality enough. Uh, who'd have thought? <laughs> who would have thunk it? So let me connect this one here. And um, the reason why I mentioned that is because I eventually went back and bought the Ser or bought the Shore SM58s, and the SM58s have been pretty nice. Have been pretty nice since, so that's been good. And those are the mics that I use now with my setup. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to connect this this transmitter to the Rodecaster Pro 2. And this is some of the issues that you face sometimes. Sometimes it gets like very like like tricky with trying to get it added and it makes it a little bit frustrating to set up sometimes so let me go ahead and just turn this off first let me hit the button for pair a new device let me turn on this and then when i turn this on then i'm going to press the power button and then we're going to hopefully connect nope not connected let me try again oh you know what? i think it's connected to another channel no it's not i don't know what's going on with it All right, let's try this one more time. So I'm gonna turn this on. So it's now powered on. I'm gonna pair a new device. I'm gonna click the button. Okay, cool, all right, we got it. So I'm gonna put this at both plus 12 just to keep it consistent. Um, not not really that I would run them at that, but sure. So it's not, just so we can see the bars more, accept, more um, expressively. Okay, so moving on to the supporting equipment. Um, I do have a bag that I have to carry around. Two bags, actually. One for the mic stands, like I talked about before, and another one for uh, the mics themselves. This happens to be a CPAP bag, a CPAP machine bag. Um, you don't have to use a CPAP machine bag, just any bag will work. But inside of here, I have the microphones that I use, four microphones that I use, the Ceramonics I talked about before. And then also I have some more cables, so that way people can sit further away and have headphones connected directly to the Rodecaster Pro 2. Uh, so that's this here. These are all just like a mess of cables. Uh, there's another. There's a cleaner solution I can have for this, which I, I, I'm going to investigate more. It's, I think I'm just using an Ether channel to do it, but I haven't purchased the boxes yet. That's a future me problem, not right now. But those are just various cables. Uh, down here we have some extra headphones for the podcast guests if they don't have their own. We have some supporting equipment for the Rode GoTo wirelesses. This is just their wind muffs and everything. And then we also have some other transmitters. Here we have a Zoom. Uh, I forget the name of this. What's this called? This is a Zoom ZH4 or ZHA4, which is used to basically turn one one um, output source into four. Uh, it, at one point it was needed. I don't need it anymore, but it lives in this bag now since it's in this bag. And then finally up here we have, oh, not finally, we have the power cable for the Rodecaster Pro 2. And then finally we have the mics. So these mics are, like I said, the Shure SM58. Uh, these mics are pretty nice because they're pretty durable, means, which means I can kind of shove them in this bag without too much worry. And there we go. Just get a nice little view of it. Put the wind muff in there. And there we go, the short SM58s. Uh, the old mics that I used to use, which I have one uh, right here. Oh no, <laughs> that was almost bad. Sorry, I'm put this down. So the old mics that I used to use were these ones. Now, the reason why I, I, I wanna talk about these mics is because one, uh, there is a quality difference for sure, which we'll talk about what they are as we go along. But the main thing is that d uh, dynamic mics were significantly better, significantly better than the condenser mics I use. The condenser mics got a lot of background noise. They got a lot of background you know, echoes. They could hear other people. There's a lot of crosstalk you can hear because of it. But the dynamic mics are nice because they're less sensitive and you have to be a lot closer to actually hear them. And uh, ultimately, dynamic mic were, be were the next evolutionary step for me with this podcast equipment. But the reason why I'm kind of spending a lot of time talking about it is because the Pile uh, PD Mic 78, they actually worked. They were pretty good, except for they were pretty noisy in the sense that uh, handling, if somebody's handling the mic directly, you hear nearly every every finger touch, every cell of skin in your hand you hear, which I guess is a weird phrase, but you hear all of it whenever you're handling the mic. Whereas with these ones, these ones were this uh, short SM78 or SM58 was designed for vocalists. So there's a lot less noise. It's a lot better for people to handle. The price differential, the price delta between these two is 
uh, $85 though, meaning that this costs $15 and this costs $100. So as you know, like I said before, because I need four of these, $400 versus, uh, oh, versus $60. Yeah, the, the, uh, there, there was a reason why I went for these first, because in my mind, worst case scenario, if they don't sound great, then I, you know, $60 down the drain, as opposed to spending $400 first and then finding out that these would have worked instead. So, and ca call it an occupational hazard, call it a, a loss, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, sure. So let's go ahead and get into the comparison of these two, though. Um, what I have here is I have a XLR to 8th inch. And that's so I can plug these directly into the road mics or the road um, road transmitters. So here's the shore one with the shore sticker there. And we'll plug this one into number one, no, number two. And the main thing is to demonstrate that this actually works. So if I bring the mic close to my face here, we can see that I'm actually talking. Here you can see the line moving. Let's mute. Let's mute number one so we don't get too much crosstalk. Uh, once again, you're not going to hear anything. You're going to see the lines because I don't, I don't want to connect. I don't want to connect this up to my... Um, sound system right now um but yeah we can see the microphone is working if i bring it close to my face if i bring it pretty far we can see that it's it's not picking up much and that's that's arm's length away um my wingspan i think is about six six three so take that how you will um with one arm <laughs> pointing in this direction um but yeah but that's that's about the the best part of this entire mic setup so you can have somebody sitting across from me and somebody sitting across from me, they're on their own microphone, and I'm talking. So this mic is pointing to them, per se. And I'm talking, I'm like, yeah, you know, hey, this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you can hear me, of course, because I'm using a different mic for all this entirely. But note that you're not seeing the level go up. But if I point it to me and get closer to myself, we can see my mic. There we go. Dynamic mics. We all love them. Also, the handling noise. So just kind of observe where the lines are going. Uh, so handling noise is handling back and forth. Just kind of moving your fingers around. And we're doing this based on visual, unfortunately, not based on sound. So my apologies for those who want to hear it. Um, I will not plug it in. Only that's other people. And then we're going to plug in the pile mic. And the pile mic will unmute it. And here we go. We got the pile mic connected in. Uh, let me mute the other one. There we go. So this is the shore mic. And here's the pile mic. So here's the pile mic. If I bring it close to my face, you can see the level. Once again, another visual indicator. My apologies for those who want to hear what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. Um, once again, I'm not an audio file, not an engineer, but this is how far we're going to go. And then if I bring it away from myself and start talking, you can kind of see that the audio is pretty much canceled out, about as canceled out as you might want to be. You can see a little bit of movement at the top, but that's about it. And then if I do the handling noise, this is where it's like a huge difference. Like you hear, like this is, this is absurd. Comparatively, if I unmute the shore, so the shore is number two and the pile is number one. So if I just rub my finger against it, you can see that the shore is doing a fantastic job at canceling that out. And then if I tap, if I tap on it with my thumb, you can see the shore is doing a great job of canceling out. Now granted, the shore is still hearing it, but the pile is hearing it, like the pile is hearing hearing it, like a lot. So that's... That's one of the benefits of going for the more expensive mic is that you have better handling noises, um, which is not that big of a deal because we use the mic stands. I guess theoretically we can get around that by just telling people not to touch the mic. <laughs> That's probably a better a better move to be honest. But speaking of the mic stand, these are the mic stands I have here. These are the Sam. This is the last last thing I'll get into for this entire video, by the way, just in case you wonder about time. This is the Samsung mic stands. I think when I bought them, they were twenty four dollars a piece. I think they're currently running for about twenty two dollars a piece. So you might be able to find it for a little bit cheaper. On top of this, I have a uh, shock mount. This shock mount is like, the, I think it's called like a Liker, Liker shock mount or something like that. It, it ran me about $12 a piece. And in the description, I'll include all the links to all the, the, the parts from Amazon. If you want to get everything from Amazon. Um, but yeah, but this works out. So this is a little boom arm, so you can kind of have it, you know, stands up. It actually gets taller if you need it to. So if I twist this, I can make it taller. All the fun stuff. I'm not going to give a full demonstration of this because I don't have the standing room for it right now. I'm just kind of on top of a table here. But I do want to... Yeah, there we go. I do want to hook these in so you can see the difference with the noise. So here's the Shure mic with the handling noise. And then if I plug it into here, the shock mount, the shock mount will do its job which is great.
So I put a little piece of Velcro on this so I can, um, so wrapped around there so I can kind of connect in the transmitter so people can mute their mic. If they're on the podcast, they can just mute it by doing that. Hitting the little button, mutes themselves. Uh, anyway, little little tidbit there. So here is handling noise from... One second. There we go. Here's handling noise from touching the boom. So remember, we're looking at number two. Number two is what we're looking at. And as you see, number two, we're not, we're not hearing much. I mean, we're hearing a good, we're hearing a little bit. We're not hearing much. So let me mute number one. Yeah. Once again, just, just all around pretty good stuff. Pretty good. Shock mount's doing his job. The mic's doing his job. Between those two, you can kind of bump around on this and not hear much. Uh, you do still hear it a little bit, but it's not nearly as much as you would hear on the pile mic, which will be the last thing that we show before we close this video because we are hitting up on the 40 minute mark here soon. Ah. All right, here's the other. Whew. Same stand. Uh, well, it's not the same stand, it's a different stand, but same type of stand. And similar shock mount. And here's the pile mic. Connecting that in. go cool almost there all right there we go and then once again a little piece of velcro there to hold on to the transmitter all right there we go so now if i handle this you can see probably oh sorry about the camera you can see like probably a massive <laughs> a massive difference <laughs> It's just for me touching, like it's inside the shock mount. Inside of, not the same shock mount, but basically an equivalent shock mount. Uh, the same kind of shock mount. And I'm just tapping all over this. Oh, oh, I see, sorry. I was trying to figure out why I was moving that. All right, there we go. My apologies for the shaky camera there. And yeah, you can see it's just kind of making a lot of noise. Uh, just to give a final comparison for those who might be doubting me. Ah. <laughs> so much lifting here. Here's the other one, the ceremonic, or sorry, the ceremonic, the shore one. And then here's the pile. So the pile, I'm just gonna tap on it. And then for the shore, I'm trying to give it the same same treatment here. Eh, I guess it's not the same. Uh, I mean, even as, I, as I'm moving, like you can see like I'm moving this around like I'm just kind of handling it. You can see it's not really picking up much sound. If I move this one around, yeah, you're seeing all kinds of stuff. Anyway, all right, cool. I, I think I've kind of emphasized that point enough. Uh, the main thing I'm trying to bring up is that, yes, the paying the extra money was better, ultimately, because I get a better quality mic, but I wasn't too happy. I mean, we're talking about a factor of, like, oh man, I don't know what, what, what X factor that is. It's from $15 to $100, so it was more money. It was more expensive, and uh, yeah, I kind of appreciate that I spent the money now, but, the past me that had to pay for it was not very happy about that. <laughs> Let me just say it that way. Okay, cool. All right. So I think that's pretty much it as far as what I want to talk about in this entire video. Uh, we've covered a lot of things. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know what your questions are. I will try my best to answer them. But once again, I'm not an audio, I'm not an audio engineer. I am not a audiophile. I am just somebody who happened to stumble upon helping people record a podcast that I get to be a part of. And as a result, I have all this equipment that I've been evolving over time. The Rodecaster Pro 2 sounds like the Rodecaster Pro 2. It does its job. This box functions well enough for me to actually get everything through. There's probably a more efficient way for me to do some stuff, like maybe get this bag a little bit more in order, maybe have like a bigger bag that can carry more stuff in, maybe a bigger case to carry everything in. That'll be fun. Um, but ultimately, this is what I have. Um, oh, I, oh man, I always forget to talk about this. Uh, I did forget to talk about if you want to use XLR mics instead. Uh, this, you will definitely need some angles to do that, or an angle angle cable. But these angle adapters are probably going to be needed to angle up the connections like so. And that'll allow you to connect in your uh, XLR mics and stuff. I also have this here, which is one solution I was going to try, which is using the Rode VXLR to connect in the uh, the receiver, the Rode GoTo wireless receiver into here. But ultimately that ended up being a little bit more excessive than what I needed. Like it's more equipment that I don't need to carry around, more equipment to forget potentially. This was a much more clean 
and much more simple solution for me to use. So that's why I ultimately have these cables, which I have a blue and a red, so I can kind of differentiate the two. All right, so that about wraps up the video. Like I said, let me know your questions. I'll try my hardest to answer them, or try my best, not hardest, but definitely try my best <laughs> for sure to answer them. And then uh, if you want to answer some questions or if you have any comments, critiques, or recommendations, feel free to leave them. And that's basically it. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you all whenever.